In this lecture, we are going to talk about word embeddings and an algorithm called word to vec which is typically used to create word embeddings. Let's start with motivation and context. What are word embeddings? The idea of word embeddings is to create representations of words. For example, real valued feature vectors representing words so that distances between these feature vectors or words in the feature space indicate relationships between them. Here is an example. We see that similar words are close together in our feature space. So we have this cluster of words with positive connotation and this cluster of words with negative connotation. Now, typically, word embeddings or word vectors will have more than two dimensions. Here, we are only showing two dimensions for visualization. So you can think of this as a PCA plot with first two principal components of our word vectors. So far, we have been talking about sentence or document representations. For example, in sentiment analysis or spam classification, we encoded our text data using bag of words representation. Now we are going one step back and talking about word representations. Why do we really care about word representations? If you want to do anything interesting with text data, we need to capture the meaning of that text. Now word is a basic unit of text and in order to capture meaning of text, you kind of need to capture meaning of words. One way to capture meaning of words is in terms of relationships between them. And that's what we are trying to achieve with word embeddings. So the overall idea is to model word meaning in order to model meaning of a text. Now, word meaning is not an easy concept. It's been a topic of interest for philosophers and linguists for centuries. Here I'm showing you an example from legal domain. And this example kind of shows you how much time and energy people can spend on arguing about the exact meaning of a word. It's a tariff court case which went all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. And the dispute is about whether some hockey glove should be put in this category of gloves and mittens or it should be put in this category of other articles of plastic. And of course, the consequence of this was going to be more or less tariff charges. So the point I want to make here is that word meaning is not an easy concept and you can spend lots and lots of time arguing about the exact meaning of a word. In machine learning and natural language processing, when we model word meaning, we do not really want to get into this philosophical debate on the exact meaning of a word. We want to model word meaning that allows us to find relationships between them and that allows us to draw useful inferences to solve meaning related problems. For example, if you are working on sentiment analysis, then you want to identify words with positive connotation and words with negative connotation. In machine learning tasks, it wouldn't typically matter what's the exact meaning of hockey gloves. If hockey gloves and hockey stick occur in similar contexts, then it might be useful for machine learning tasks to consider them as similar words, even though they have very different meanings. Another example, suppose you are carrying out sentiment analysis. You are given these two sentences. The movie was awesome and the movie was amazing. Now, if you look at definitions of these two adjectives, you will find some subtle differences between the definitions. But for our task, we do not really care about these subtle differences. What we care about is that both these words have positive connotation. And if one of these sentences has a positive sentiment associated with it, then the other one is also likely to have a positive sentiment. And overall, what we want to do is we want to learn word representations that capture such relationships between words. How are word embeddings related to unsupervised learning? The idea of word embeddings 
is to extract meaningful representations of words that capture some meaning related aspects such as relationships between words. This idea is very much similar to dimensionality reduction, where we extract meaningful representations from raw data. Last week, we saw a number of dimensionality reduction methods, such as LSA, PCA, and NMF. Today, we are going to talk about another class of algorithms called word to vec algorithms. These algorithms are based on neural networks, and the approach here is kind of different compared to, say, PCA or LSA. In word to vec we are going to work on a prediction task. That said, it does not need any human annotated data, but we use running text as supervision signal for our prediction problem. Now, you might think that word to vec and word embeddings are limited to text data. Although they are more popular and widely used for text data, they have also been used for other kinds of data. For example, you can build a recommender system using word to vec algorithm. And the topic of next week is going to be recommender systems. So learning about word to vec is kind of a nice segue to that topic. In the next two videos, we will talk about different methods to create word representations.